was a victim of not being taught um, in my first language. I grew up in the U.S. and my first language was Spanish. Not until I was five, I started learning English. I remember being um, sitting, having like teacher-parent conferences, and my teacher saying, "Well, her first language is Spanish. It's fine that she's not doing well on these subjects because it, like, that's uh, English is her second language, so that's just expected." How would you in looking at areas maybe that aren't um, indigenous or uh, the whole community speaks, you know, certain languages and first language, but children such as myself, for example, who were just in certain communities where, you know, there are no, would, it, would you say, you know, put a special teacher for those kids or what would you suggest, I guess? It's a big question. It's a good <laughs> one, though. Um, I think this is one of the reasons why it can relate back to developed countries as well as the developing world, because it's a big issue. You know, is it necessary or not? I, my parents moved to Chile when I was small, so I had my education in my second language, which was Spanish, until I was 13, and it didn't kill me. But, like, the idea of having, I mean, English and Spanish are two quite big languages, you know, they, okay, I know this, it's different in the US in terms of status, but they're still big languages, and teachers who have some kind of recognition that, yes, okay, you might not be doing as well. In Thailand, a lot of the reactions from the Thai teachers has been, you know, these kids, they're quite clever, <laughs> because they've never actually seen them raise their hand and answer a question before. They had no understanding, and they just thought, well, it's the kids that are stupid, because they were doing, the teachers were teaching as they'd been taught to teach, and the children weren't learning. Therefore, the fault was the children's. So I think there is, you know, you do need to look at, like, different contexts and minority versus majority. I, I still think it's worth looking at in terms of um, valuing, I guess, part of the identity and the equity thing as well, is having your language valued as, as important as somebody else's even if it's not the one you do all your schooling with, or even if your parents can help you at home with your homework, then, I don't know. There's a lot of, there's a lot of research on that as well, which I haven't read it all, but it's a very good question. <laughs> I can talk more later if you want. <laughs> okay, please. Thank you for your really great presentation. I really like the way that you identified just so many different barriers that exist, whether it's with the teachers actually, how they work, whether it's even the way that thinking of parents or even at the national discourse is just such a multi-layered thing and that was the thing for me that stood out in, in the uh, connected to the last presentation was this talk about how do we talk about the processes and the processes themselves being the things that if you like bring to light the local understandings and meanings and that also is really evident in your, um, in your presentation and I guess I mean my sort of question was um, you know as you've highlighted, it's become recognized now more as an it. Quality is tied into this thing with quality improving learning outcomes. Um, as you've highlighted, I mean, it seems that that had made, has that distracted attention away from the actual processes, teachers, how they can manage this, and, um, you know, with the things that, that need to be talked about in terms of resources and so on. As the, um, should we be worried about it in more of a linguistic rights thing rather than just focusing on the outcomes of education? Another big question. Sorry. Yeah, um, you've got to start somewhere, is what I end up coming back to when I get all discouraged and just go, oh, it's just too hard, it's too complicated, I'll go and do something else. Um, yeah, you've got to start somewhere. And the hook in Thailand at the moment is more along the lines of the quality. There are organisations talking about indigenous. Indigenous is very sensitive in terms of who was actually there first. And so it's a word we tend to avoid in the Thai context anyway, although some people want it in there. Um, I'm, I guess I'm more practical in terms of there, have been, there was a, a, a rumour a year, a year and a half ago that they were going to expand to 20 schools down the road and that my team, being me and one intern, were going to be in charge of the training for that. And I panicked because I thought, well, they haven't thought anything through. Any of the things about where's the money going to come from to pay the teaching assistant? Aren't we going to start preparing the materials ahead of time? Because that's really stressed the teachers out and all those other things. Um, I mean, these aren't meant to be pilot projects. And there's almost a danger when you're trying to do it as a bit of a showcase of, look, it works, that you then gloss over 
some of those things about, but how we do it makes a difference, and it makes a difference to attitudes, and it makes a difference to whether it will work or not. Um, there's a danger that we could be saying we're implementing bilingual education, but actually not being, because the teachers aren't doing it. So um, I think I tend towards the how are we going to make it work stage of things. I have colleagues that work very high up at the, you know, the language rights and the good things for your country kind of thing. Um, I guess my research and where I'd like to go back and work in the future is more along the lines of, well, the nitty gritty, how, how do we make it happen? How do we make it easier for these teachers who feel they're being supplanted and these teaching assistants who are being put in a tough position? Um, how, do we, how do we make it work for them? Yeah, I don't think that really answers your question, but never mind. Um, how about, it's just out of curiosity, because um, you said teachers do not speak the local language. Um, I just wondered why, but why there are no why there are no teachers that are trained locally. It, Maybe it's just that I don't know enough about don't no, know no, enough no. The context. It turns into a bit of a vicious circle, I think, in a lot of contexts that especially with the smaller language groups, there aren't enough people that make it through school. And now in Thailand to be a teacher you have to have a four year degree as well. There just aren't enough there are, there are very few people coming through um, the education system and doing well enough to become teachers. And there's also a question of whether they'd want to be teachers or not, because if they do get that far, they'd rather go and do, you know, try aim higher. It's a bit of the teaching as a last resort thing, which is a wider issue. Um, you know, mine's a bit of the medical profession. Though. Yeah. If you get people from the rural areas to train in, in urban areas, it's quite unlikely that they want to go back. Mm. Exactly, especially for a four-year degree. I mean, we've got teaching assistants who are, you know, they finish grade nine. That we've got quite a few female teaching assistants, which in their community is quite a big deal because, yeah, the gender balance is definitely not equal there, and they've really felt quite excited by the fact that they've become a teacher. But the chances of them being able to jump through the hoops to become a qualified teacher unless there's some flexibility on that side, some allowance for distance learning or crediting their experience, is very, it looks very difficult to me. But because, almost because Thailand's trying to raise its educational quality and saying teachers must have this degree, that's making it much harder. I know in other areas, like in China, in some ethnic minority areas, they have done this lowering the, um, the bar for people who want to come on certain courses if they are from a main ethnic minority area and if they're going to go back to that area for a certain number of years after and they'll get a scholarship and things. Um, Laos is much is next door, it's much less developed and they maybe would be more willing to be flexible on that. Thailand seems a little bit stuck at the moment in this, well we've said that the teachers have to be so qualified for this quality and they haven't really thought about the language bit yet and whether it would be worth making some allowances or what would you do there or whether they just need to say right well we'll have less less qualified teachers for the first few years of primary school um, because they speak the local language and that's better actually but yeah that's that's quite a tough one from a policy oh, point yeah. of view I think <laughs> <laughs> thank you Okay, shall we stop here? And since we've got lunchtime now, so you'll be able to, you'll still be able to you know, talk to her and then speak as during the lunchtime. So, thank you very much for coming.